All right, so thank you very much, Rude. Always entertaining and relevant. But the next talk, I really am excited because I want to hear about um, um, where we are with, uh, with Clang implementations on, on OpenMP. So let me see if I can, I'm successful at this time at trying to put this thing on the screen. Yes. No, well, let's scroll properly. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Jim County from Intel. Uh, a lot of this work has been done by Intel, but mostly in our Russian compiler lab. Um, I'm our architect for uh, the OpenMP runtime, so I can talk in more detail about the runtime. Uh, and uh, I'll try and skip through this quite fast, because I know that uh, John has a lot of interesting stuff to show, and we're both standing between you and beer, or whoever's party you're choosing to go to this evening. So a, a little history just to set the tone. Um, what we're talking about, OpenMP support in, in LLVM. There are two ways that you can choose to compile OpenMP uh, inside the compiler. Either, so normally what you have to do, you have to outline the, function, the, the body of the parallel region so that you can execute it in parallel. Uh, you can do that early or late. There were several proposals in 2012, all of them which involved late outlining and therefore changes to the LLVM intermediate representation, which were not acceptable to the LLVM community effectively. They thought that that were too large changes and too complicated. So instead of that, uh, uh, there was an OpenMP project uh, in to proposed which would do the outlining right up at the front of the process so that the rest of the system doesn't really, isn't really aware of OpenMP at all. It just sees sequential code which happens to have calls to runtime routines in it and some different addresses, uh, addressing operations. That was started by AMD and uh, continued by Intel, uh, supporting early outlining. And the OpenMP runtime library calls are generated right at the front of the whole process. Uh, the result of that is that there are no changes to the LLVM IR required, which makes it a much easier uh, sales proposition to the LLVM community because it has many fewer implications on the way that the whole of the rest of the, the compiler chain works. Um, just to be clear, the difference between the early and, and late outlining. So you have to, this, this example is really just showing outlining. So what happens is you have this OpenMP code on the left, which has a pragma on parallel four. You can see that it's accessing um, these up-level variables, A, X, Y, and Z. They're all shared variables. They're all in the outer scope. That has to be converted into something much more like the code on the right-hand side, where firstly, at the top there, we have some call to, to a runtime routine or an abstraction of a runtime routine, which is doing the work sharing for that loop. And then you can see in red here, the, all of the addressing of, this, uh, inner func of these variables, A, I, A, um, X, and Y, and Z, has been replaced by effectively accessing them indirectly through this struct pointer R, which is a pointer back into the stack frame of the, of the, of the non-parallel region. So the whole of this parallel loop has been abstracted into this function 4B, and a pointer is passed in that allows you to access those shared variables. And that can all obviously be done. You can see here this is effectively a source-to-source -source translation. That's done in the, in the Clang front end so that the intermediate representation that's generated and seen by the whole of the rest of the, the compiler remains, as far as it's concern, concerned, effectively sequential. So a, slight, a quick comparison of the advantages of doing that early or late. So early means you're doing it right up at the front in the, in the parser, effectively. Late means doing it right down towards the end so that much more of the runtime, no, much more of the compiler has to know about it. The advantage of doing it early, the major advantage is that you don't have to change the rest of the intermediate representation, whereas with the late, late you would have to. However, there are some disadvantages, which are that you, you have to, all of your optimizations that are based on the parallelism are still up, right up at the front there. They can't be shared with other languages. They're right in the, in the language dependent part of the system. Similarly, there are other optimizations like constant propagation, which are much harder to do when you've already, uh, already converted this into a separate function. And uh, the issue of whether it affects later compilation phases is kind of similar to the, whether the intermediate representation is unchanged. Again, you, that's not the, you don't get the benefits of, of, of that if you, uh, if you do early outlining. So 
in some ways, late outlining is a preferable implementation. It preserves more stuff, but it has many more implications inside the compiler infrastructure. So it wasn't acceptable to the LLVM architects. Therefore, there's, there's no real point in continuing the discussion. We have to do what we have to do. Uh, so a very small example that Larry Meadows kindly ran. Uh, you can see here, I, I'm not going to dive into Clang intermediate representation other than just to point out that here's this, you know, Pragma Parallel 4, you can pile it, you can dump the AST, and you can see the bits in red that it's introduced this on parallel directive here, that it's a, so that's aware of it in the, in the parse tree, and it's worked out that it has to capture these a, N and A uh, up-level references from the parallel region. The, clearly, a compiler is very good, but you can't run anything without a runtime. There has to be something that actually causes threads to be created and is involved in all of that. We, uh, the existing GCC implementation of OpenMP uses a, has a runtime, so one might assume that you have an open source runtime and that's great. Unfortunately, um, GCC runtime is uh, licensed under GPL, whereas all of the LLVM licensing is a BSD, actually a NCSA, University of Illinois NCSA open source license, which is much closer to a three clause BSD license. And they were not happy to use uh, uh, the, the GPL code. So what was required is a, is a fully uh, LLVM compatible licensed runtime. And we took the decision that it would make sense to open source our runtime, the Intel runtime as used in our production compilers for use by this project and many other uses, uh, one of which John will be talking about in a minute, uh, under that kind of a license. So our runtime is now open sourced with an LLVM compatible license, which is effectively a BSD license accompanied by a patent grant so that you can be completely confident that unless you start trying to sue Intel, you can use it uh, for whatever you wish to do. You can make modifications. You can sell products based on it. Um, additional advantages of having an open source runtime, mentioned just since we're talking about it, is the ability for tools providers to instrument the runtime. This is what John's going to be talking about. For prototyping new language features, it's useful to do that. You can also port the runtime to, to other architectures should you wish to, and we're entirely amenable to receiving contributions for processes that Intel doesn't support. We have uh, accepted some contributions to the build system and the runtime that enable ARM, allow you to build it for ARM. They're not actually back out again because there's a slight turnaround time, but they will be out in the next release. And you can add detailed instrumentation, for instance, if you're interested in doing hardware simulation and that kind of thing. Uh, the current status is that uh, OpenMP 3.1 support is available in a Clang patch uh, hosted at that web address. It's, it targets the, uh, run the ABI, as we obviously seems, should be obvious by now. It can run SPECO MP 2012. It passes all our internal OpenMP tests. Uh, the upstreaming of that to the Clang trunk is underway. The main issue there is finding people with Clang commit privileges who are prepared to spend the time reviewing the changes. Uh, and so the more people in the community who want to get involved and, and help us move forward, the better. Uh, and the runtime library is available either at openmp.llvm.org, where there's a git mirror of it, or at openmprtl.org. And as we said, that has LLVM <coughs> compatible licenses. Um, the library libiomp 5 is already interoperable with GCC compiled code, so you can potentially mix code that's been compiled by Clang, by GCC, and by ICC all in the same executable, link against the one OpenMP runtime library, and have that work correctly. Um, there is no, however, because of the, the, some of the issues we were discussing with the, with the early and late uh, outlining, there's no uh, simple solution for Dragon Egg, which is the kind of G Fortran bolted onto LLVM front end. Uh, so the G Fortran generated objects, if you just use G Fortran, that's fine. Because of the link compatibility, you can do that. But there isn't a Fortran through LLVM system that supports OpenMP yet. And of course, it, it, oper interoperability with our compiler is, is, uh, is the same as ever. So it's available now. You can download it. Promotion's happening. You can get the runtime. You can use it for whatever you want to do. Uh, it's completely uh, free BSD license with patent grant open source. 
contributions are welcome and we're very happy to receive, receive them and to receive feedback on the process. Hi. I have a question. The, the issue is, is not is not my issue, it's LLVM's issue. They want BSD licensed okay. stuff. <laughs> so, so Jim, I think this is great. I, I, I really you know, I think it's a great thing that you guys have re released your runtime and made it available to the community. Um, so, I mean, there, there's obviously, so, so I, I don't know the status of the implementation for Intel systems, because you guys have a lot of low level stuff that you've done. I don't know if that's included in what was released. Yes. Okay, that's also wonderful. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, how, how we go about getting similar quality on other systems, but that's clearly not Intel's <laughs> job, so I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. The, the question I actually have is, um, so, I mean, we've added a lot of stuff in 4.0, and there's gonna be a, I mean, there, there are a lot of implications for the runtime support. Um, how much of that is there, and what are the plans okay. on Intel so to update? So, the status at the moment is that the architecture of our system does not put the offload functions into the OpenMP runtime. That's partly historical because when we did them for the Intel offload, they were Intel offload pragmas that were unrelated to OpenMP. So we have a separate library called libOffload, which handles, uh, which sits on top of Koi and the rest of all that stuff. And that has no implications. It, none of that code is in the OpenMP runtime. Uh, it's possible, so, so that's one issue that the, the availability of that code is whether we choose to open source that or not is under discussion. Um, and, and so keep, keep looking here. On the other set of issues though, things like uh, distribute, um, or, you know, uh, the, 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 the parallel loops with the different teams, all of that stuff, the teams distribute stuff is all in the, in the runtime. It's all there. It's already released. Excellent. And I know I don't get a vote, so I'll just encourage you to, to go ahead and release the lib offloads. I, I think we will do the right thing, but it is not plan of record yet, so you should not rely upon it. Any, any, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Jim. That was fantastic.